The last semester of their graduation had finally arrived, bringing with it a bittersweet mix of excitement and nostalgia for Leo and Clara. As the sun dipped low in the sky, casting a warm glow across the college campus, Leo and Clara found themselves seated in the familiar canteen, surrounded by the buzz of their friends and the clatter of trays. Their laughter echoed in the air as they shared stories from the past, reminiscing about the countless moments that had shaped their college journey. The aroma of cafeteria food wafted through the air as they indulged in their favourite lunch, surrounded by the camaraderie of friends who had become family over the years. After the satisfying meal, Leo and Clara, along with their friends, trudged back to the classrooms for the afternoon lectures. As the day unfolded, the idea of breaking free from the routine gripped Leo and Clara. They exchanged glances and, in unison, decided to skip the next class, craving a moment of respite from the academic rigmarole. The duo, armed with spontaneity and a zest for adventure, set out to explore the surroundings of their college. They ambled through quaint streets, savoured street food and absorbed the vibrant culture that had become an integral part of their lives. The world seemed to slow down as Leo and Clara revealed the simplicity of their newfound freedom. Leo suggested a trip to the nearby beach. Clara's eyes lit up with excitement as they made their way to the sandy shores, the rhythmic sound of the waves serenading their steps. They found a quiet spot away from the crowd and settled down on the soft sand. The cool breeze from the sea played with their hair as they sat side by side, gazing at the horizon where the sun prepared for its nightly retreat. Clara, breaking the comfortable silence, turned to Leo and asked, What did you like about me? Leo, with a fond smile, replied, Your confidence and your knack for understanding everything around you. You have this way of turning things the way you want and... I've always admired that. I've always wanted a confident and ambitious girlfriend like you. Clara blushed at the compliment, a radiant smile lighting up her face. So, she teased, when are you going to propose to me, Leo? I've been waiting for the grand proposal. Leo chuckled, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Proposal, huh? Who said we need a ring for any preparations for that? With that, he got up on his knees, facing Clara, and took her hands in his. The sun, now a fiery ball sinking into the ocean, bore witness to the moment. With the vastness of this ocean and the warmth of the setting sun as our witnesses, Leo began, looking into Clara's eyes. Will you marry me? Clara's eyes widened in surprise, and a rosy hue spread across her cheeks. Now? But we don't have anything, Leo interrupted. Do we need anything to express what we feel? He held his breath for a moment before Clara, her eyes sparkling, whispered a heartfelt, Yes. They embraced each other, the sounds of the ocean providing the soundtrack to this intimate moment. As they strolled away from the beach, hand in hand, Leo suggested celebrating with a dinner at Clara's favourite restaurant. The night unfolded in laughter, shared dreams and the joy of a new chapter beginning. Days turned into weeks, and the quack of emotions brought on by the proposal soon gave way to the looming reality of final exams. Leo and Clara found themselves immersed in textbooks and late-night study sessions, trying to strike a balance between academics and the euphoria of their newfound commitment. The journey to graduation was marked by sleepless nights, stressful exams and a shared determination to succeed. Yet, in the chaos, Leo and Clara found solace in each other's company. They became pillars of support, offering encouragement and motivation as they navigated the challenges of academia together. As the last exam concluded, relief washed over them. Leo and Clara now armed with degrees in hand, stood at the threshold of a new chapter. Graduation day arrived and Leo and Clara donned their graduation robes and exchanged proud smiles, knowing that this was just the beginning. Amidst the cheers and applause, Leo and Clara found each other in the sea of graduates. 
They shared a silent promise that no matter where life took them, they would face it together. With diplomas in hand and dreams in their hearts, Leo and Clara stepped into the unknown, ready to embrace the journey that lay ahead. The post-graduation period unfolded as a tapestry of shared adventures, career aspirations and the weaving of their lives together. Leo and Clara's love continued to grow, strengthened by the trials of college life and the triumphs of their shared achievements. Their journey was a testament to the enduring power of love and the beauty that unfolded when two souls dared to dream together. With time, they found themselves standing on the shores of a new beginning, just as they had on that beach during their last semester. Life after graduation brought a new rhythm for Leo and Clara. With diplomas in hand, they stepped into the professional world, eagerly embracing the challenges that awaited them. The days became rapid with office tasks, deadlines and the sweet anticipation of returning home to each other. In the mornings, they hurriedly prepared for the workday, stealing glances and exchanging affectionate smiles. Evenings brought a rush to come back to the warmth of their shared apartment, where the aroma of home-cooked meals lingered in the air. Their love story continued to flourish as they navigated the complexities of adulthood together. The bond between Leo and Clara deepened with each passing day. Their connections was not just based on love. It was a partnership, a companionship that weathered the storms of daily life. They found solace in the familiarity of each other's presence, creating a home that echoed with laughter, shared dreams and the comfort of unconditional love. One ordinary evening, as they unwound from the day's demands, Leo turned to Clara with a gleam in his eyes. Clara, he began, what do you think about us getting married in the next few months? Clara's eyes widened with a mix of surprise and delight. Married? Really? She exclaimed. Leo nodded, his smile unwavering. Why not? She responded, her heart brimming with happiness. What about the preparations, the arrangements? She asked, a hint of worry in her voice. Leo, ever the reassuring partner, said, Don't worry. I have a friend who is a wedding planner. He'll take care of everything. All we need to do is show up and say, I do. Excitement filled Clara's heart and she agreed. Okay then, let's meet your friend tomorrow. The following day, Leo arranged a meeting with his wedding planner friend and together they expressed their desires, preferences and dreams for their special day. The wedding planner, attentive and understanding, soaked in every detail and assured them that their wedding would be nothing short of magical. As the days passed, invitations were sent out and the excitement among friends, family, relatives and colleagues grew. The anticipation reached its peak on the day of the grand wedding. The venue was adored with flowers and lights and the air was filled with laughter and joy as Leo and Clara exchanged vows, promising a lifetime of love and companionship. The post-wedding days brought forth a new chapter in their lives. Leo and Clara, now a married couple, reveled in the bliss of their union. Clara, inspired by the love she felt for Leo, decided to take a bold step. She chose to leave her job to focus on creating a home and taking care of her beloved husband. The small palace of their apartment became a sanctuary of love, filled with shared moments, laughter and the warmth of their connection. Clara's decision to resign was met with Leo's support and gratitude, creating a balance that allowed them to cherish the simple joys of married life. In the cocoon of their love, Leo and Clara decided to take the next step and plan for a family. However, despite their efforts, the journey to parenthood proved to be more challenging than they had imagined. Months turned into a year and the joyous expectation began to wane as the realisation set in that conceiving a child wasn't as simple as they had hoped. Their shared dreams of parenthood faced the harsh reality of disappointment and a cloud of uncertainty hung over their once blissful home. 
Leah and Clara faced the difficult truth together, leaning on each other for support. The initial optimism gave way to moments of sadness and frustration, yet their love endured, a beacon in their darkness that reminded them of the strength they found in each other. Leo, I don't understand why it's not happening for us, Clara confided one evening, her eyes reflecting the pain that came with the unfulfilled desire for a child. Leo, his gaze tender, replied, I know, Clara. It's tough for both of us, but we're in this together. We'll figure it out. As they navigated the challenges of infertility, Leo and Clara found themselves caught in a web of medical appointments, emotional highs and devastating lows. The strain on their relationship became palpable, and the distance that emerged threatened the foundation of the life they had built together. Maybe we should take a break from trying, Leo suggested one day, his voice tinged with concern. It's affecting us, Clara. We need to prioritise our relationship. Clara? Tears glistening in her eyes, nodded in agreement. You're right, Leo. Let's take a step back and focus on us. Whatever happens, we'll face it together. The decision to pause their attempts to conceive marked a turning point in their journey. Leo and Clara redirected their energies toward rebuilding the emotional connection that had been strained by the challenges they faced. They sought solace in the love that had brought them together, allowing it to heal the wounds inflicted by dashed expectations. Months turned into a year of rediscovery and renewal. Leo and Clara, resilient in their love, emerged from the shadows of infertility with a strengthened bond. Days turned into nights and the strain on Leo and Clara's relationship lingered like a heavy cloud. Clara's attempt to surprise Leo with a week-long travel tour, aimed at rejuvenating their connection, had taken an unexpected turn. Leo's reaction, fueled by work stress and financial concerns, had left Clara in a state of shock and heartache. That evening, as Leo walked into their home, his weariness was evident. The weight of the new project bore down on him, evident in the lines on his forehead and the heaviness in his steps. Clara, determined to bring a spark of joy into their lives, had been waiting eagerly for the surprise she had carefully planned. However, Leo's arrival shattered the anticipation. Clara's eyes lit up with excitement as she greeted him, but Leo's response was not what she had hoped for. Instead of reciprocating her enthusiasm, Leo seemed detached and lost in his thoughts. Clara, sensing his distress, offered him a glass of water. Is everything all right, Leo? She asked with genuine concern in her voice. Leo sighed, a mixture of exhaustion and frustration evident in his reply. It's just work stress, Clara. A new project has landed on our team and it's been hectic. He took the glass of water, appreciating the gesture, but unable to shake off the weight on his shoulders. As Clara listened, her excitement turned into empathy. She understood the pressures Leo was facing at work and wanted to be a source of support. However, before she could express her understanding, Leo noticed her anticipation and questioned her activities at home. What were you doing at home today? Leo inquired, his tone unintentionally accusatory. Clara's smile faded as she began to explain. I wanted to surprise you. I booked tickets for a week-long travel tour for both of us, thinking we could use a break from everything. Leo's face contorted into a mixture of surprise and irritation. Why did you book it? It's not that simple, Clara. Money is hard to earn and you can't just spend it like it's nothing. His words, sharp and critical, struck Clara like a sudden gust of wind. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she tried to maintain her composure. Leo! You've never spoken to me like this before. I just want to bring some joy into our lives, especially considering how tough it's been for both of us lately. Leo, seemingly unmoved, retorted, You've changed, Clara. You act like you own my money. You're not the person I married. Hurt and confusion painted Clara's face as she stood up. I'm just taking care of you, Leo. I'm trying my best to be a good partner. 
Look, I even packed everything you like for the trip. Your books, your games and your favourite wine. I packed your clothes, casual wear, tuxedo, pyjamas. If there's anything else you want, just tell me. I, I thought a break would do us good. Leo, unyielding, dismissed her efforts. You said it's a one-week tour, but you packed like we're moving houses. Look at yourself, Clara. You've changed so much since we've got married. The words hung in the air, a painful reminder of the growing distance between them. In frustration, Leo retreated to the guest room, leaving Clara alone in their shared space. We have our room! Why are you sleeping in the guest room? Clara shouted after him. Leo's response echoed from the guest room, cold and detached. I don't want to sleep with you tonight. Clara left standing in the silence of their home, felt a wave of sadness wash over her. The reality of the situation hit her, and tears streamed down her cheeks. The attempt to bring joy had inadvertently brought sorrow, and the once harmonious atmosphere now echoed with the echoes of a strained relationship. The night passed in silence, with Clara contemplating the turn of events. The emotional distance between Leo and her seemed unsurmountable, and the weight of his words lingered heavily in the air. As she lay in bed, she wondered how they had reached this point and what could be done to mend the fractures in their relationship. The next morning, Clara woke up with a heavy heart. The silence between them had taken on a tangible form, and Leo's absence from their shared bed was a stark reminder of the growing gap. As she prepared breakfast, Clara tried to shake off the unease, hoping that a new day would bring a fresh perspective. However, as the hours passed, Leo remained elusive. He left for work without a word, leaving Clara with a sense of abandonment. Throughout the day, Clara tried to reach him by phone, but her calls went unanswered. The distance between them, both physically and emotionally, seemed to widen with each passing moment. Leo's decision to avoid communication only fueled Clara's anxiety. She questioned herself, wondering if her attempt to surprise him had irreparably damaged their relationship. The uncertainty gnawed at her, and she spent the day oscillating between a sense of despair and a flicker of hope that Leo would eventually reach out. As the day turned to night, Leo still hadn't returned home. Clara's worry deepened, and the realisation that her efforts to bridge the gap had failed weighed heavily on her. The apartment, once filled with warmth and laughter, now echoed with the silence of a relationship in turmoil. The night stretched into dawn, and Clara, sleep-deprived and emotionally drained, faced the new day with a heavy heart. Leo's continued absence cast a shadow over their once happy home, leaving Clara grappling with the uncertainty of their future. In the days that followed, Clara's attempts to reach Leo remained futile. The walls of silence grew thicker, creating a chasm between them that seemed unsurmountable. The strain on their relationship, once confined to unspoken words and tense moments, now manifested in the tangible absence of Leo from their shared life. As Clara navigated the challenges of each day alone, the ache of longing for Leo's presence intensified. The weight of Leo's silence hung over Clara, leaving her to confront the painful reality of a relationship in disarray. Clara resilient in her love for Leo, grappled with the uncertainty of their future, she faced the daunting task of rebuilding what seemed irreparably broken, unsure of whether Leo would be willing to meet her halfway. The days turned, and the silence between them persisted, a testament to the fragility of love when faced with the complexities of life and miscommunication. During the emotional turmoil, Clara clung to the hope that time would heal the wounds and bring clarity to their relationship. The journey ahead was uncertain, but she remained steadfast in her commitment to the love they had once shared. As she navigated the challenges of each day, Clara confronted the harsh reality that some wounds take time to heal, and rebuilding a fractured connection required patience, understanding and a willingness to bridge the gaps that had emerged between them. 
Two days, Clara found herself at a crossroads in life. Amidst the chaos and turmoil, she had a realisation. Clara began to ponder the possibility of restarting her career, which had taken a backseat for some time. Feeling determined, she decided to take the first step. Clara reached out to a couple of her friends who worked in different companies, seeking their help with job referrals. With a sense of anticipation, she applied to these companies, hoping for a fresh start. To her surprise, the very next day, Clara received interview calls from two of the companies she had applied to. Excitement mixed with nervousness, Clara geared up for the interviews. Before heading into the first interview, Clara decided to call Leo just to know his whereabouts, but he didn't pick up. She dialed his number, but to her disappointment, Leo didn't pick up. Clara sighed, telling herself she could handle it alone. Entering the interview room, Clara faced a panel of interviewers who welcomed her with warm smiles. The first question came her way. Tell us about yourself. Clara responded confidently. Well, I've been out of the game for a while, taking a break to figure things out, but now I'm eager to jump back into the workforce and contribute my skills. The interviewers nodded, intrigued. As the interview progressed, Clara answered questions with sincerity and passion. She found herself gaining confidence with each passing moment. After the first interview wrapped up, Clara took a moment to gather herself before heading to the second one. Despite her earlier disappointment with Leo not answering the call, Clara was determined to give her best. During the second interview, when asked about her aspirations, Clara replied, I've had time to reflect on what I want, and I'm ready to commit to my career. I believe this company aligns with my goals, and I'm excited about the opportunity to be a part of it. The interviewer seemed impressed by Clara's sincerity and determination. As she left the building, Clara couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. Later that evening, Clara tried calling Leo again to know about him, but he still didn't answer. She left him a voicemail expressing her concern for him as he hadn't been picking up her calls and not knowing his whereabouts. Despite the unanswered call, Clara felt a renewed sense of hope and optimism about the possibilities that lay ahead in her career. Finally, the door creaked open and Leo walked in. Clara, who had been sitting on the couch, immediately stood up and rushed towards him. She threw her arms around him, embracing him tightly. Leo! Where were you these two days? I was so worried! She exclaimed, her voice a mix of relief and concern. Leo, looking wary but repentant, returned the hug. I'm sorry, Clara. I shouldn't have acted the way I did. It was uncalled for, he said, his words muffled against her shoulder. Clara pulled back, looking into Leo's eyes with a mixture of understanding and forgiveness. It's okay, Leo. We all have our moments. What matters is that you're back and we can talk about it. Leo nodded, a sense of gratitude evident in his expression. Thank you for being understanding, Clara. I appreciate it. As they separated, Clara guided Leo to the living room. Come, sit down. Tell me where you were and what happened. Leo sighed, taking a seat on the couch. Oh, I went on a business trip to LA. It was unexpected and I didn't have much time to inform you. I'm sorry for not picking up your calls. Work was hectic and I couldn't manage to answer. Clara's expression softened as she listened to Leo's explanation. A business trip? Why didn't you tell me beforehand? I was worried sick, Leo. Leo ran his hand through his hair, a sign of both exhaustion and remorse. I know, Clara. I should have communicated better. It was also sudden and I got caught up in the work. Understanding Leo's perspective, Clara nodded. Well, now that you're back... Let's put this behind us. I made your favourite meal. You must be hungry. Sit here, I'll get it for you. With that, Clara headed to the kitchen, determined to ease the tension with a comforting meal. As she prepared Leah's favourite dishes, her mind reflected on the ups and downs of their relationship. She knew that conflicts were inevitable, 
but communication and understanding were crucial in overcoming them. In the kitchen, the aroma of home-cooked food filled the air. Clara set the table with care, arranging the dishes Leo loved. Soon, she carried the steaming plates to the dining table and called Leo over. Here you go, Leo. Your favourite homemade lasagna, garlic bread and a side salad, Clara announced, trying to bring a sense of normalcy to their strained atmosphere. Leo's eyes lit up at the sight of the delicious spreads. This looks amazing, Clara. Thank you, he said sincerely. As they sat down to eat, Clara couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope. The act of sharing a meal, a simple yet intimate act, had the power to bridge the gap between them. They engaged in small talk, avoiding the topic of their recent disagreement, and focusing on the flavours of the food. After finishing the meal, Leo retreated to his room, expressing a need for rest. Clara, although relieved by his return, couldn't shake off the residual unease. She knew that a single meal couldn't erase the complexities of their relationship, but it was a step in the right direction. Leo closed the door to his room, the weight of the argument and the business trip still lingering in his mind. He sat on the edge of the bed, deep in thought. The realisation of how his actions had affected Clara weighed heavily on him. Meanwhile, in the living room, Clara cleared the table, her mind swirling with thoughts about the recent events. She understood that Leo's work was demanding, but the lack of communication had left her feeling isolated and anxious. As she tidied up, Clara wondered if their relationship could withstand the challenges that life threw at them. Clara woke up early, preparing breakfast and hoping to start the day on a positive note. As she set the table... Leo emerged from his room, looking more rested but still carrying the weight of the unresolved conflict. Good morning, Leo, Clara greeted, trying to infuse warmth into her voice. Morning, Leo replied, his tone neutral. The tension between them was still palpable, and Clara wondered if the wounds from their recent argument had truly begun to heal. Throughout the morning, Leo seemed preoccupied, and Clara, sensing his inner turmoil, decided to give him some space. She focused on her daily routine, hoping that time and a measure of normalcy would pave the way for a more open conversation. As the day progressed, Leo announced that he needed to head to work. Clara, hesitant but wanting to support him, said, If you need anything, just let me know. We can talk when you're ready. Leo nodded, a faint acknowledgement of her words. With that, he left for the office, leaving Clara alone with her thoughts. The day unfolded quietly, with Clara reflecting on the complexities of marriage and the challenges that came with balancing work and personal life. Hours passed and Leo didn't return home as expected. Clara, growing increasingly anxious, attempted to reach him by phone, but her calls went unanswered. The echoes of their recent argument resurfaced and Clara couldn't shake off the worry that their relationship was slipping through her fingers. As the evening descended into night, Leo still hadn't returned, Clara facing the spectre of uncertainty once again, wondered if this was a continuation of their strained communication. The silence from Leo, both at work and in response to her calls, felt like a stark reminder of the lingering distance between them. The night stretched into the early hours of the morning and Clara found herself unable to sleep. The worry gnawed at her and a sense of helplessness settled in. The lack of communication and Leo's continued absence left Clara grappling with a mix of emotions. Fear, frustration and a yearning for the connection they once shared. With the first light of dawn, Clara's concern reached its peak. Leo had not returned home and the weight of the unknown pressed heavily on her chest. In a desperate attempt to reach him, Clara dialed his number once again. The phone rang, but there was no answer. The tranquility within Clara's heart was shattered by the persistent worry gnawing at her. Leo had not returned home and her calls had gone unanswered. The uncertainty lingered like a heavy fog, prompting Clara to take matters into her own hands. Determined to find answers, Clara decided to reach out to Leo's colleagues at the office. Perhaps they knew something about his whereabouts. She dialed the number of his closest co-worker, Sarah. 
After a few rings, Sarah answered, her voice carrying a tone of surprise. Hey, Clara, what's up? Sarah greeted. Uh, hi, Sarah, I'm a bit worried. Leo hasn't come home and he's not answering his phone. Do you know if he's still at the office? Clara inquired, her concern palpable. Sarah hesitated for a moment before responding. Well, Leo completed all his work yesterday. Everyone left early yesterday. Leo also left the office early yesterday. Oh, maybe he went out with friends or something. A sense of unease settled in Clara's stomach. Okay, thanks, Sarah. If you hear anything, or if Leo shows up, could you please let me know? Sure thing, Clara. Don't worry too much. He'll probably show up soon. Sarah reassured before ending the call. Despite Sarah's attempts to provide comfort, Clara's worry only intensified. To ease her concerns, she decided to call the office directly. With a sense of trepidation, she dialed the office landline, hoping someone would answer and provide clarity. After several rings, a dispassionate voice answered, Hello, how may I help you? Clara took a deep breath, her voice steady yet filled with concern. Hi, uh, this is Clara, Leo's wife. Is Leo still at the office? I haven't been able to reach him. The voice on the other end hesitated before responding. I'm sorry, but there's no one in the office at this time. The office is pretty much empty right now. Panic surged through Clara's veins. Empty? Do you know anything about him? The person on the other end seemed puzzled. I'm sorry, ma'am, but there is nothing I can help with. If anything comes up, I will let you know. The realisation hit Clara like a bunch to the gut. Leo had not been at the office, and neither his colleagues knew his whereabouts. The web of confusion tightened around her, leaving her with more questions than answers. Just as Clara was grappling with the surge of emotions, her phone buzzed. It was an incoming call from Leo. With a mix of hope and apprehension, she answered, Leo? Where are you? I've been so worried. Clara's voice reflected a blend of relief and concern. Leo's voice, though distant and distracted, finally reached Clara's ears. Hey, sorry. <clears throat> My phone died. I had a sudden meeting with the client after work. I, I couldn't make it back home, so I stayed at their place. I'll be heading back to the office now and should be home in the evening. Clara's worries transformed into a mix of frustration and relief. Leo... You had me so worried. Why didn't you answer your phone or let me know where you were? I called you office and they said you weren't there. Sorry, Clara. It was a last minute meeting and I didn't have a chance to charge my phone. I should have told you. I'll be more careful next time, Leah replied, his tone apologetic but distant. Before Clara could delve deep into the conversation, Leo abruptly ended the call. The abruptness left Clara with a sense of confusion and the unease that had gripped her heart persisted. As the day unfolded, Clara couldn't shake off the lingering sense of discomfort. Leo's explanation felt incomplete and the abrupt end to their conversation left her with more questions than answers. She tried to focus on her daily tasks, attempting to regain a sense of normalcy. As the clock ticked toward evening, Clara anxiously awaited Leo's return. When he finally walked through the door, Clara's emotions ranged from relief to frustration. She met him with a furrowed brow, her eyes searching for an explanation. Leo, what happened yesterday? Why were you at the client's place without telling me and why did you hang up the call so abruptly? Clara's voice, though calm, carried a tone of assertiveness. Leo, looking tired and perhaps a bit guilty, sighed. Clara, it was unexpected. The client needed some urgent discussions and it went on longer than I anticipated. I should have let you know, I understand that, and about the call, I, I was in a hurry to get back to the office. Clara, torn between her worry and Leo's explanation, nodded. Communication is crucial, Leo. I was so worried, and I couldn't even reach you or get accurate information from your office. Please, let's promise to keep each other informed, especially in situations like this. Leah, realising the impact of his actions, nodded in agreement. You're right, Clara. I should have been more considerate. I promise to be more communicative in the future. The tension in the room slowly dissipated as Leah and Clara 
acknowledged the importance of open communication in their relationship. However, beneath the surface, Clara couldn't shake off the lingering unease. The abruptness of Leo's actions had left a mark and, as they settled into the evening, both Leo and Clara pondered the complexities that arose when misunderstandings and lack of communication strained the threads of their once seamless connection. The evening settled into a quiet calm after Leo and Clara had dinner together. The fatigue of the day weighed heavily on them, and they decided to retire to bed early. The promise of a peaceful night's sleep beckoned, and they both welcomed the chance to escape into the comforting embrace of slumber. The clock ticked away the minutes, and the quiet of the night enveloped their home. The moon cast a gentle glow through the curtains as Clara drifted into sleep beside Leo. However, as the night wore on, a subtle restlessness stirred within Clara's subconscious, prompting her to wake up with a sudden thirst. She opened her eyes, the room dimly lit by the soft glow of the moon. The space next to her hinted that Leo wasn't in bed. Curiosity and concern mingled as Clara quietly got out of bed, careful not to disturb the peaceful ambiance of the room. She tiptoed through the hallway, her bare feet padding softly against the cool floor. A flicker of light emanated from the slightly ajar guest room door, catching Clara's attention. Wondering if Leo might be there, she approached the door with caution. As Clara pushed the door open, a scene unfolded before her eyes that she hadn't expected. Leo was hunched over his laptop, engrossed in his work. The glow of the screen illuminated his face, revealing a look of concentration. Perplexed, Clara couldn't help but question why he had chosen to work in the guest room instead of their bedroom. Leo, what are you doing here? Clara asked, her voice a gentle whisper to avoid startling him. Leo looked up, momentarily surprised, before a faint smile crossed his face. Hey, Clara, I received a message from the client to update a few things urgently. It won't take long. <laughs> you go back to sleep, I'll join you in a bit. Clara, though understanding of Leo's work commitments, couldn't shake off a hint of confusion. But why here? Why not in our room? Leo sighed, a mix of exhaustion and apology in his eyes. I didn't want to disturb your sleep with the glow of the laptop screen. I thought I'd work here for a while and then come back. Clara, still slightly puzzled, nodded reluctantly. Okay, just make it quick. I'll be waiting for you in our room. As Clara stepped into their bedroom, Leo, for reasons known only to him, quietly slipped into the guest room, closing the door behind him. Clara, unaware of Leo's movements, prepared for bed, the weariness of the day gradually giving way to the promise of rest. In the guest room, the wardrobe door creaked open with an almost imperceptible sound. From within, a figure emerged, moving with the grace of someone accustomed to secrecy. Kristen, a name whispered in the shadows, navigating the room with soft, careful steps. Her eyes met Leo's, and in hushed tones she inquired, Has she left? Leo, engrossed in the clandestine nature of their meeting, nodded. Yes, she's back in our room. You can come out now. With a barely audible exhale, Kristen moved to sit beside Leo. Her voice, barely more than a murmur, conveyed a mixture of caution and excitement. We almost got caught. Leo, seemingly unfazed, reassured her with a confident tone. No, dear. She won't suspect a thing. Clara trusts my words. And if she finds out, I'll handle it. You're safe. If, if it ever comes to that, you'll be the queen of this house. A fleeting smile played on Kristen's lips as she absorbed Leo's words. The allure of secrecy and the promise of a clandestine connection hung in the air. Their whispered exchanges, hidden away in the guest room, painted a picture of a relationship woven with threads of discretion and risk. As the conversation concluded, Kristen retreated into the shadows, disappearing through the back door of the same quiet finesse with which she had entered. Leo, now alone in the guest room, closed the wardrobe door, leaving behind no traces of the night's secrets, and quietly entered the room. Clara, pretending to be asleep, felt the mattress shift as Leo settled beside her. 
The morning sun painted the room with hues of warmth, but the atmosphere between Leah and Clara remained cool and unresolved. The events of the night lingered, demanding a conversation that neither of them felt ready to initiate. Clara and Leo navigated through their routine with a palpable sense of tension. The unspoken weight of the previous night's revelations hung in the air, creating a distance they neither knew how to bridge. The hours passed, and the moment of reckoning approached as they found themselves alone in the quiet of their home. Finally, with a deep breath, Clara broached the subject. Leo, we need to talk about last night. I need to understand what happened. Leo, looking weary but willing to confront the issue, nodded. I know, Clara. I should have been more honest with you. Let me explain. The room filled with a hesitant silence as Leo recounted the events of the previous night. Clara listened, her expression a mix of understanding and frustration. As Leo spoke, Clara couldn't help but reflect on the complexities of trust and communication in a relationship. The need for transparency, even in the face of challenging situations, became evident. Leo, grappling with the consequences of his choices, acknowledged the importance of rebuilding the trust that had been momentarily shaken. The conversation extended into the evening with both Clara and Leo expressing their feelings, concerns and hopes for the future. The air gradually cleared as they navigated through the intricacies of forgiveness and understanding. The road ahead remained uncertain, but the willingness was there. The night had passed and the morning sun cast its gentle glow across the room, signalling the beginning of a new day for Leo and Clara. After the clandestine conversation in the guest room, the air between them felt different, tense, yet pregnant with unspoken words. As they sat at the breakfast table, the remnants of the previous night lingered in the air. Clara, hesitant but determined, broached the subject that had been on her mind. Leo, should we start trying for a child again? The break has been long enough. Leo, sipping his coffee, looked up with a distant expression. His response was curt and unexpected. No, let it be. Clara, taken aback by the bluntness of his reply, felt a pang of disappointment. She watched as Leo stood up, leaving the breakfast table without uttering another word. He disappeared into their room, leaving Clara alone with her thoughts. Even though it was Sunday, a day usually reserved for relaxation and quality time together, Leo declared his intention to go to the office. Clara, puzzled by this deviation from their routine, questioned him. But it's Sunday today and you're going to the office! Don't we usually go on a trip every weekend? Leo, still fixated on his decision, replied, Yeah, we did, but there's a lot of work pending on my side, so I'm going. I'll be back by the afternoon and let's go out for dinner tonight. Be ready with something good to wear. Clara, momentarily placated by the prospect of an evening together, nodded and agreed. As Leo left, Clara contemplated what to wear for their dinner date her mind momentarily distracted by the anticipation of the evening. Meanwhile, Leo, who had earlier claimed to be heading to the office, found himself at Kristen's house. The afternoon unfolded in an atmosphere of secret enjoyment hidden away from Clara's watchful eyes. Back at home, Clara, excited about the evening, remembered the new dress she had purchased a few days ago. Due to limited space in her wardrobe, she had kept it in the guest room wardrobe, as she opened the door, her eyes caught red hair on the dress. Confused and curious, she furrowed her brow, trying to recall how it got there. Then a troubling thought crossed her mind. Leo had been in the guest room the previous night. The possibility that he might have brought someone into their home while she was sleeping shook her to the core. Clara, grappling with a mix of emotions, doubt, confusion and hurt, decided to investigate. She chose to spy on her husband, driven by the need to unravel the truth and confront the nagging suspicion that had taken root in her mind. As the afternoon waned, Leo returned home, blissfully unaware of Clara's growing doubts. The evening approached, and Leo, perhaps attempting to make amends for his earlier aloofness, suggested they go out for dinner. Clara, although harbouring suspicions, welcomed the idea, hoping the night would bring some clarity to her troubled thoughts. At the restaurant, the atmosphere was tense as they settled into their seats. 
Clara, trying to ease into a conversation, remarked, It's been a long time since we came here. Leo, perhaps still weighed down by the events of the night, replied with a simple acknowledgement. Yes. Attempting to gauge Leo's reaction, Clara brought up a topic about a friend's husband who was cheating on his wife. Leo, sensing the direction of the conversation, interjected in a somewhat defensive and light-hearted tone. Do you also think I'm cheating on you? Clara, maintaining her composure, responded with reassurance. No, I know you too well. We were friends before we became a couple, and I understand your actions. If you were cheating, you wouldn't be behaving like this. The conversation shifted, and they placed their orders. Throughout the meal, Clara observed Leo trying to discern any signs of guilt or evasion. Leo, on the other hand, attempted to project a sense of normalcy, engaging in small talk and maintaining a facade of cheerfulness. As they finished their dinner and dessert, Clara's mind churned with conflicting emotions. Leo's attempt at humour did little to dispel the cloud of doubt that lingered in her thoughts. At home, they changed and retired to bed, the silence between them echoing the unspoken questions that hung in the air. The next morning dawned with a semblance of normalcy. Clara, determined to maintain the facade of a harmonious relationship, woke up early to prepare breakfast. Leo, seemingly unaffected by the events of the previous night, joined her at the table. As they shared a quiet breakfast, Clara watched Leo carefully, searching for any signs of guilt or remorse. However, Leo's demeanour remained unchanged. After finishing his meal, he got ready for work and left for his job without any acknowledgement of the lingering tension between them. Clara, left alone in the wake of Leo's departure, pondered the events of the past night. The doubt that had taken root in her mind continued to grow, casting a shadow over the once bright and hopeful future she had envisioned with Leo. And so, the stage was set for a reckoning, a confrontation that would either shatter the fragile trust between Leo and Clara, or force them to confront the truth that had been concealed in the shadows. The web of deception, doubt and secrecy tightened, and the couple stood at a crossroads, unsure of the path that lay ahead. The day unfolded as usual for Clara, a facade of normalcy masking the storm, the brood within her. As Leo left for work, Clara seized the opportunity to execute her plan. Determined to unveil the truth, she discreetly planted hidden cameras throughout the house, focusing particularly on the guest room, the epicentre of her suspicions. Nightfall cast its shadow and Leo returned home, unaware of the vigilant eyes that now watched every move within the house. Clara greeted him warmly, concealing her newfound knowledge beneath a veneer of normalcy. They shared a quiet dinner, the weight of impending revelations hanging in the air. As the night deepened, Leo and Clara retired to bed, the subtle tension between them amplifying the silence that enveloped their shared space. An hour passed and Clara feigned sleep, her senses heightened as Leo stirred beside her. With calculated stealth, he slipped out of bed and descended to the hall. The creak of the back door echoed through the quiet house as Leo surreptitiously ushered Kristen inside. Clara, wide awake and attuned to the unfolding drama, listened to every footstep that resonated through the night. Her heart pounded, a mix of dread and anticipation coursing through her veins. In the guest room, hidden cameras captured the clandestine rendezvous. Leo and Kristen, unaware of the prying eyes that bore witness to their secret liaison, engaged in whispered conversations that betrayed the trust Clara had held dear. Unable to contain her mounting distress, Clara reached for her phone and accessed the live feed from the hidden cameras. The sight of Leo and Kristen seated together, their intimacy exposed, delivered a blow to Clara's heart. At that moment, the foundation of trust upon which their marriage had rested crumbled. Summoning the courage she had mustered throughout the night, Clara stormed into the guest room, her resolve unyielding. Leo, sensing her approach, hastily concealed Kristen in the wardrobe, adopting the guise of a diligent worker. Clara, fueled by a mixture of fury and hurt, confronted her husband. Leo prepared himself as Clara stormed into the guest room. Clara, her eyes ablaze with a mix of fury and hurt, wasted no time in confronting her husband. What's happening here, Leo? 
What's the meaning of this? Leo, attempting to deflect, replied with a falsely calm demeanour. Clara, wh what are you talking about? Nothing is going on. Don't play games with me, Leo, Clara retorted, her voice sharp with disbelief. I saw everything on the cameras. Don't lie to my face. Leo, cornered, adopted an air of defiance. Cameras? What are you talking about? You're overreacting. Clara, fueled by a surge of anger, brandished her phone displaying the damning footage. Overreacting? Look at this, Leo. Explain what's happening right now. Leo, realising the undeniable evidence against him, attempted to downplay the situation. Clara, it's not what you think. We were just talking. Talking? Clara scoffed, her patience wearing thin. In the middle of the night, Leo. And why hide her in the wardrobe? Leo, searching for an excuse, stumbled over his words. Well, we didn't want to disturb you. Kristen just needed someone to talk to. Disturb me? Clara shot back, her voice rising with indignation. You've been cheating on me and you've worried about disturbing my sleep. Leo, this is unacceptable. Leo, realising the gravity of the situation, shifted from denial to a more defensive stance. Clara, it's not that simple. There are things you don't understand. Don't understand, Clara repeated incredulously. What is there to understand, Leo? You're having an affair, plain and simple. Leo, growing agitated, retorted. It's not an affair. I love Kristen. Things between us have changed and I can't pretend any more. Clara, her eyes welling with tears, struggled to comprehend Leo's callous admission. Love. Leo, what about us? What about our marriage? Is this how little it means to you? Leo, his tone cold and detached, responded. Our marriage hasn't been working for a long time, Clara. I found something real with Kristen. Clara, her voice trembling with a mix of anger and hurt, pressed on. So it's because we can't have a child, isn't it? You blame me for a medical condition? Leo, unwilling to accept responsibility, snapped back defensively. It's not about blame, it's about finding happiness. Happiness, Clara exclaimed, her composure slipping away. You're destroying our life for what you think is happiness. Leo, this is betrayal of everything we built together. Leo, his patience exhausted, raised his voice. I can't live a lie, Clara. I deserve to be happy. Clara, her heart breaking, shot back. What about my happiness? What about the vows we took? Did they mean nothing to you? Leo, the weight of his choices apparent, hardened his stance. I can't change how I feel, Clara. You need to accept that. Acceptance proved elusive for Clara, her emotions raw and unfiltered. Acceptance! Leo, you've torn our world apart. You've shattered the trust we had. I can't accept this betrayal. As the argument raged on, the echoes of Leo's admission reverberated through the once harmonious space. Clara, grappling with the harsh reality of her husband's infidelity, faced the daunting task of rebuilding a life that had crumbled in the wake of Leo's profound betrayal. Leo, his patience exhausted, seized Clara and dragged her into the hall. With a determined resolve, he swung open the door, revealing the fresh hold between the life they had shared and the uncertain abyss that lay beyond. I found the real love of my life, and I don't need you any more. Leo declared with cold finality, his words cutting through the night air. Without a shred of remorse, he expelled Clara from their once shared home, the door closing behind her, severing the ties that had bound them together. As Clara found herself alone on the doorstep, the chill of the night air mirrored the icy void that now enveloped her heart. Betrayed and discarded, she faced an uncertain future, her life fractured by the revelation of Leo's infidelity. The once promising tale of love and companionship had unravelled, leaving Clara to navigate the aftermath of a shattered marriage, the echoes of Leo's callous words lingering in the silence that now defined her existence. Uncertain and adrift, Clara began walking down the cold, dimly lit streets. Her breath hung in the air, a visible reminder of the harsh reality she now faced.
The question of where to go loomed large in her mind, a daunting prospect in the aftermath of the shattered life she had left behind. Amidst the sombre atmosphere, Clara's thoughts turned to a distant but cherished friend, Jazzy, who still lived in the same city. Clara fumbled for her phone, her fingers cold and trembling. With a deep breath, she dialed Jazzy's number, hoping for a glimmer of solace in the emotional storm that raged within her. The phone rang, each tone a reminder of the fractured life she now sought to escape. Finally, a warm voice answered on the other end. Hello? It was Jazzy, her tone a beacon of familiarity in the unfamiliar darkness that surrounded Clara. Clara, her voice shaky, replied, Jazzy, it's me, Clara. A pause followed as if the distance between them had stretched into a chasm of unspoken understanding. Then Jazzy's voice softened. Clara, what's going on? You sound upset. Tears welled in Clara's eyes as she struggled to find the words to convey the tumultuous events that had transpired. Leo, he kicked me out. I've nowhere to go. Jazzy, a surge of concern in her voice, responded, Oh, Clara, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, where are you? I'll come to get you. Clara, her voice choked with emotion, replied with gratitude. I'm on the street, Jazzy. I don't even know where to go. Without hesitation, Jazzy reassured her. I'm coming to get you. Just give me a few minutes. We'll figure this out together. As Clara stood on the cold street, the distant hum of approaching car lights brought a glimmer of hope. Jazzy pulled up beside her, her face a mix of concern and empathy as she gestured for Clara to get in. The car interior provided a brief respite from the biting cold. Jazzy, her eyes scanning Clara's tear-streaked face, gently asked, Do you want to talk about it? Clara, the weight of her emotions pressing down on her, began to recount the painful events that had unfolded. Leo and I... We've been having problems, but tonight I found him with someone else in our guest room. He told me he doesn't love me anymore. Jazzy, her expression a blend of empathy and disbelief, reached out to squeeze Clara's hands. I can't believe he would do that. You don't deserve this, Clara. Tears streamed down Clara's face as she continued. He kicked me out, Jazzy. I don't know what to do or where to go. I feel so lost. Jazzy, a steadfast pillar of support, offered comfort. You're not alone, Clara. You're staying with me for as long as you need. We'll get through this together. Gratitude washed over Clara, a fragile lifeline amid despair. Thank you, Jazzy. I don't know what I would have done without you. As the car navigated the quiet streets, Jazzy's words echoed with a promise of refuge and solace. The road ahead was uncertain, but at that moment... Clara found solace in the warmth of her friend's embrace and the comfort of knowing she wasn't navigating the aftermath of her shattered marriage alone. As they arrived at Jazzy's house, the warm glow of the porch light welcomed them. Jazzy, understanding the depth of Clara's turmoil, ushered her inside. Jazzy, a steadfast friend, sensed Clara's need for solace and offered a glass of water. Clara, her hands trembling as she accepted the water, took a deep breath before unravelling the tale of Leo's betrayal. As Clara recounted the painful events, Jazzy's expression transformed from sympathy to raw anger. I can't believe he would do that to you, Clara, after all these years! Clara, her eyes filled with tears, nodded in acknowledgement of the shared outrage. Jazzy continued, You deserve so much better, Clara! No one should be treated this way. Leo's actions are inexcusable! The venomous words served as a cathartic release, a shared denouncement of Leo's betrayal. Jazzy, her anger vented, turned to Clara with a compassionate gaze. Listen, Clara. Sitting here won't solve anything. You need to take care of yourself. Why don't you go get some sleep? Embracing Jazzy's advice, Clara and Jazzy retire for the night. The weight of the emotional turmoil had left them both drained, and the solace of sleep provided a reprieve. The morning sunlight filtered through the curtains, gently waking Clara from a restless slumber. Jazzy, already dressed for work, approached Clara. I have to leave for the office. Uh, please make yourself at home. Anything you need is in the fridge. Take care, Clara. 
With a supportive hug, Jazzy left for her job, leaving Clara in the quiet solitude of the house. As Clara sat alone, the weight of her thoughts pressed heavily upon her, but a determined voice within her urged her not to succumb to the despair. After more than four hours of contemplation, Clara realised that wallowing in self-pity wouldn't change the situation. It was Leo's betrayal, not her fault. Gathering strength, she got up, freshened up, and decided to nourish her body with some sustenance. In the kitchen, Clara found ingredients for a hearty meal. The act of preparing food became a therapeutic exercise, each chop and stir a symbolic reclaiming of control over her life. By evening, the aroma of delicious pea curry and rice filled the house and the dinner table was set. As Jazzy opened the door, the tantalising scent enveloped her senses. She hurried inside, curious about Clara's culinary endeavour. Clara, now radiant with newfound determination, smiled as she announced, I made pea curry and rice with salad. Let's eat. Jazzy, touched by Clara's effort, headed to the room to freshen up. When she emerged, the dinner table awaited them. The two friends sat down to share a meal, the silence broken by the clinking of utensils. Amidst bites of the flavourful curry, Jazzy turned to Clara. So, what are your plans now, Clara? Have you figured out what you're going to do? Clara, a spark of resilience in her eyes, nodded. Yes, Jazzy, it's Leo's fault, not mine. I won't let this break me. Today I sorted things out and cleared my mind. I applied for a few jobs a few days ago and gave interviews. I was so heartbroken from Leo's behaviour that at some point last month, I realised I needed more in life. That is when I applied to a number of places, hoping to hear from them soon. I won't let this betrayal define me. Jazzy, impressed and proud of Clara's newfound determination, clapped her hands. That's my girl. After marriage, she became a complete housewife, but... Now I see the old confidence and energy in you. All the best for the future. If you need any help from me, please feel free to ask me. Clara, appreciative of Jazzy's unwavering support, expressed her gratitude. Thank you, Jazzy. Your kindness means the world to me. I promise to return the favour when I can. After dinner, they spent time watching a movie, finding solace in the simple act of companionship. As the night settled in, Clara and Jazzy retired to their respective spaces, grateful for the comforting presence that had begun to mend the fractures in Clara's shattered world. Next morning, Clara got up and prepared breakfast for Jazzy, and then Jazzy went for her job. Clara, alone at home, decided to spend some time on herself, so she decided to go to a parlour to get a makeover. So after cleaning the house, she left for the parlour. She spent two hours there, she spent two hours here, and she was very much happy to look at herself in a new look and style. Then she decided to treat herself to a meal, so she left for her favourite restaurant, and there she had her meal, and then she left to get back home. After arriving at home, she took a nap, and as evening descended, Clara prepared for another routine, cooking dinner. The familiar hum of the kitchen became a soothing backdrop as she busied herself with the evening meal. The aroma of spices and flavours filled the air, signalling the end of a productive day. Jazzy returned home, her presence injecting a sense of camaraderie into the evening. As they sat down for dinner, the two friends engaged in a conversation about the day's events. Clara recounted how she spent her day by going to the parlour and her favourite restaurant. She explained with excitement how she enjoyed herself today. Jazzy, with a genuine comment... You really look good in this new look, Clara. I'm really happy for you that you moved on from Leo and chose the path you liked. Clara, appreciating Jazzy's unwavering support, nodded in acknowledgement. I won't let Leo's decisions and actions affect me. I'm focused on the opportunities ahead. Midway through dinner, Clara received messages from a few companies further moulding the trajectory of her future. The disappointment from the first was cushioned by the success from the second, opening doors to new possibilities. Jazzy's congratulatory words echoed the sentiment of a friend genuinely thrilled for Clara's triumphs. Encouraged by the positive turn of events, Clara began to envision the shopping trip she had planned for her new job. Jazzy, always practical, suggested a slight delay aligning their plans with her free time two days later. 
As the night settled in, Clara and Jazzy retired to their respective spaces, the promise of a new beginning lingering in the air. The journey was unfolding and Clara embraced the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. Fortified by the unwavering support of a true friend and the newfound resilience within herself. The next morning unfolded with a sense of purpose for Clara. Having completed her household chores, she dressed up, radiating a newfound confidence as she headed to the second company, the beacon of her professional aspirations. Upon her arrival, the HR department extended a warm welcome. Clara was ushered into a well-lit room, where the HR representative, a friendly face named Mr Johnson, greeted her with a genuine smile. The room exudes professionalism and Clara couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement as she took her seat. Mr Johnson began the discussion by congratulating Clara on successfully clearing the interview rounds. His amiable demeanour put Clara at ease, fostering an environment conductive to open dialogue. The conversation flowed seamlessly as they delved into the terms and conditions of her employments. So, Clara, we're thrilled to have you on board, Mr Johnson began. Let's discuss the specifics of your role and the remuneration package. As the conversation progressed, Clara attentively absorbed the details of her new position. They explored her responsibilities, potential growth within the company and the various perks that accompanied the role. Mr Johnson explained the intricacies of the company culture, emphasising collaboration and individual contribution. The topic shifted to compensation, and Mr Johnson outlined the salary structure and additional benefits. Clara, with a poised demeanour, engaged in a thoughtful discussion, seeking clarity on certain aspects while expressing her gratitude for the opportunity. After reaching an agreement on the terms, Mr Johnson handed Clara the employment contract. The document, a tangible embodiment of her accomplishments, lay before her. Clara carefully reviewed each clause, ensuring that she understood the nuances of her commitment to the company. With a confident nod, Clara affixed her signature to the contract, signifying not only her acceptance of the terms, but also her commitment to the journey ahead. Mr Johnson extended his congratulations once again, expressing the company's eagerness to welcome her officially on the designated start date. Returning home, Clara carried a sense of accomplishment that transcended the professional realm. She engaged in a few activities to unwind, finding solace in simple pleasures. Perhaps it was rearranging a bookshelf, tending to a few potted plants, or just basking in the quietude of her space. The act of grounding herself became a ritual, a way to connect with her surroundings before embracing the transformative phase of her life. As evening approached, Jazzy arrived, her presence amplifying the joy that enveloped Clara. Eager to celebrate this milestone, Clara suggested a treat, an evening out to commemorate her new job. They headed to a cosy eatery, the ambiance offering a perfect backdrop for their celebratory dinner. Amidst laughter and shared stories, Clara and Jazzy relished the delectable flavour savouring each moment of the evening. Clara, with a twinkle in her eye, expressed her gratitude to Jazzy for being a steadfast companion through the twists and turns of life. This job is not just a professional victory. It's a testament to the strength of friendships and the resilience within ourselves, Clara remarked, raising her glass in a toast. The night concluded with a leisurely return home. Clara and Jazzy spent a quiet moment relishing the warmth of accomplishment and the prospect of new beginnings. As they nestled into the cosiness of their respective spaces, the echoes of laughter and the promise of a brighter tomorrow lingered in the air. Sleep enveloped them, ushering in a sense of contentment, a prelude to the exciting chapter that awaited Clara in her newfound professional journey. The sun rose on Clara's first day at her new job, a day brimming with the promise of fresh challenges and opportunities. She left her home, boiled by Jazzy's heartfelt wishes, ready to embark on this exciting chapter. Upon arriving at the company, Clara was greeted by a bustling atmosphere. Collies exchanged smiles and greetings, and Clara introduced herself to each team member, their warmth making her feel welcome. As she settled into her position, the team embraced her with open arms, eager to assist her in navigating the intricacies of her role. The morning progressed swiftly, 
and soon it was time for the much-anticipated lunch break. Clara found herself surrounded by curious colleagues, their eagerness to know more about the newest member palpable. Questions flowed and Clara answered them with a genuine enthusiasm that endeared her to her colleagues. Over lunch, the camaraderie continued to flourish, establishing the foundation for a positive working relationship. The workday unfolded seamlessly, with Clara immersing herself in her tasks. As the clock ticked towards the end of the day, Clara decided to call Jazzy and share her plans for a visit to a tire road and escape into the vibrant market after a day of productive work. Arriving at a tire road, Clara's senses were invigorated by the lively market. The vibrant colours, diverse fabrics and the hum of activity provided a stark contrast to the routine she had grown accustomed to. Clara roamed the market, feeling a sense of liberation and joy that had eluded her in recent times. In one of the shops, her eyes caught a shirt reminiscent of one Leo had owned. The fleeting memory of him stirred mixed emotions within her. Wondering about his current life with Kristen, Clara couldn't help but feel a pang of curiosity and nostalgia. As Clara immersed herself in the delightful distraction of shopping, fate orchestrated an unexpected encounter. Leo and Kristen appeared in the same shop, seemingly engrossed in their shopping spree. Kristen's disdainful glance and hurried departure fueled Clara's discomfort. Leo, on the other hand, couldn't help but notice the changes in Clara. Her newfound confidence and poise stood in stark contrast to the person he once knew. A momentary hesitation crossed his face as he observed Clara from a distance, but Kristen's call swiftly redirected his attention. Jazzy's timely arrival brought Clara back to the present. When Jazzy inquired about her downturned expression, Clara hesitated before admitting that she had just seen Leo and Kristen. Jazzy, wise and supportive, advised Clara to ignore him, mirroring the indifference Leo had shown her in recent days. Undeterred, Clara and Jazzy continued their shopping adventure. As they explored the market, Clara's eyes fell upon a stunning dress. The same dress caught Kristen's attention, setting the stage for a moment of tension. The shopkeeper, caught in the middle, announced that there was only one piece available. Both Clara and Kristen, eyeing the dress with covetous glances, simultaneously declared their desire to purchase it. Clara, with a tinge of sarcasm, conceded and urged the shopkeeper to hand it over to Kristen, insinuating her penchant for acquiring others' cherished possessions. With a triumphant expression, Clara and Jazzy left the shop, leaving behind a seething Kristen. Clara's sharp comment had hit its mark, asserting her newfound strength and resilience. Later, in a nearby cafe, Clara and Jazzy savoured a well-deserved break. Jazzy commended Clara for her unyielding spirit, expressing pride in her friend's ability to navigate challenging situations. Meanwhile, a disgruntled Kristen, holding the coveted dress, exchanged heated words with Leo. In the cosy ambiance of the cafe, Clara and Jazzy continued to enjoy their time, unfazed by the unexpected appearance of Leo and Kristen. Jazzy, with a playful smirk, remarked, Are they following us or something? Clara, however, dismissed the notion, suggesting they focus on their enjoyment. As Clara and Jazzy engaged in light-hearted banter, Leo and Kristen occupied a nearby table. Kristen, eager to capture Leo's attention, animatedly shared stories, but Leo's gaze continually wandered toward Clara. He observed her newfound confidence, the twinkle in her eye and the resolute spirit that seemed to define her in these past few days. Amidst the chit-chat, Kristen's jealousy reached a boiling point. Unable to bear Leo's distracted demeanour, she abruptly stood up, casting a disdainful look at Clara. Leo, torn between the two, chased after Kristen in an attempt to quell the rising tension. Meanwhile, back at the cafe, Clara and Jazzy are revelling in the pleasant atmosphere. Laughter and shared moments made the day memorable. Clara embracing the present and leaving behind the shadows of her past fell to newfound lightness. As the day unfolded, Leo and Kristen returned home, the echoes of their argument lingering in the air. Leo, grappling with the complexities of his emotions, confronted the realisation that perhaps the changes he witnessed in Clara were a testament to her resilience and strength. 
In the privacy of their home, Leo and Kristen found themselves embroiled in a heated argument. Kristen, exasperated, confronted Leo about his behaviour, questioning his lingering attention on Clara. Leo, caught off guard, struggled to articulate his thoughts. The argument intensified, laying bare the underlying tensions in their relationship. The next few days saw Clara stepping into her new life with a renewed sense of purpose. The supportive environment at work and the unwavering friendship with Jazzy became the pillars of her newfound happiness. She immersed herself in her job, forged new connections, and embraced the opportunities that came her way. In contrast, Leo and Kristen's relationship reached a crossroads. The tensions and insecurities that had simmered beneath the surface became the forefront. The realisation dawned that their connection might not be as sturdy as they had once believed. As time unfolded, Clara's life blossomed. She continued to cultivate her career, surrounded by colleagues who appreciated her talent and a friend who stood by her through thick and thin. The shadows of her past gradually faded, replaced by the vibrant hues of a promising future. In a twist of fate, the paths of Clara and Leo diverged, each on a journey of self-discovery. Clara, resilient and optimistic, embraced the possibilities that lay ahead. As the story drew to a close, Clara found solace and happiness in her newfound independence, proving that sometimes the end of one chapter marks the beginning of a brighter, more fulfilling narrative. <laughs>